Had to come out of the struggle Now I'll be dodging the trouble I don't be making it rain Though I came up from the puddle I'll be investing in things Making my little money double Peace kings and queens You are now tuned in with the young mogul Ramel Newell's business professional Entrepreneur, credit expert And aspiring mogul So in today's lecture I'm going to break down how to purchase a franchise in eight simple steps. For those of you who do not know me, I never assume anyone knows me, um, but for, the, for those of you who do know me, you know that I am an authorized franchisee um, of a commercial cleaning franchise. I have my own establishment. And um, I get a lot of questions every time I go around and I travel. People ask me, hey, how do you purchase a franchise? What was that process like? And it's actually easier than what we think. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not too hard. It's something that we can do. And that's why I decided to put together this YouTube video for everyone here to have that opportunity to get the information to learn how to purchase a franchise. So I'm gonna break, I broke it down into eight simple steps and we're gonna dive straight into it. Like, comment, share, ask questions. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay up to date because I'll continue to give out more information on this. Um, just a little bit of background about myself. You know, I grew up, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Um, first generation college student, I went away to the University of Albany where I graduated with my bachelor's in business management. I leveraged that to build three businesses that I run and manage today. I have almost four years of corporate management experience. You know, I kicked off my real estate investing career, acquiring a $1.2 million brownstone at the age of 25 years old and I leveraged the success and funding from that to go out and purchase a commercial cleaning franchise that is an automated business for me. And I'm continuing to expand and purchase you know, different franchises as well. So it's a, it's a vehicle for us to utilize other people's systems, right? Franchising is so important because it's a system that's already proven, a business that's proven that you can buy into and then now you run the business and you make automated money instead of you having to start from scratch or you may be a visionary to where you want to build your business or establishment to the point where you can now franchise it out. Franchising is selling your, or leasing, franchising the rights out of your business, okay? Now, the first step to purchasing a ranch franchise is doing your research. That's really what it boils down to. It. There's so many businesses and franchises, right? We can go and want to purchase a Subway or Starbucks or McDonald's. Those are the top tier franchises where you need, you know, it's a lot more money, a little more skin in the game, a larger portfolio. But for somebody like myself that invested into a commercial cleaning franchise, I would have never known in a million years that I'll be running a, com a commercial cleaning franchise. I barely like cleaning my room when I was younger. But if I see a business that a business that is automated and that can run itself and bring me passive income, why not? So we need to do our research. I did my research on the industry and I started to find out that cleaning, commercial cleaning solutions is one of the leading industries. There's so many businesses. If you think about a shake, the Shake Shack or you, a McDonald's, right? At the end of the night, who's cleaning that establishment? Some businesses hire the employees that's there to clean the establishment. And then some businesses outsource the um, cleaning to another company. There's different reasons why a company may outsource the cleaning because that's more payroll for them, more taxes, more health care, more benefits that they need to provide to the employees. But if they outsource the cleaning to another company, they just pay a service and we ultimately get rid of the headache. So they can you know, keep their establishment, run their business, but at the end of the night, they do not have the headache of worrying about whether their establishment is going to be clean. They're going to wake up and go into the office of the, the business the next day, and it's going to be spotless because they paid to not have that headache. So you want to do your research on what businesses are profitable. You want to ask yourself that, is this business profitable? And do the research. How many, what is the average income for someone that's in this business? You want to ask, is this business reputable? 
somebody that you may know that has good credibility that has been in that business. Get their insight. You really want to leverage that. You also want to ask, are you equipped with the challenge? Are you equipped to understand the challenges that come with the business? See, for me, I, I was equipped with the challenges that comes with the business because I understand client-driven businesses. I'm in a, in a corporate structure where it's client-driven, business to business consumer. So I understand the importance of you know, what it takes to make a client happy. So when the, I get a bad call from a client, I'm not upset, I know how to take care of it. But it's ultimately thriving and stemming from your research. You may wanna open up uh, Starbucks in your area. What is the radius between different Starbucks? What are the geographics? How many individuals in that area actually drink coffee versus energy drinks versus you know, healthy alternatives? You really wanna really dig deep down and do your research on whether this business is the right move for you to make in that area, okay? Once you do your research, um, well, this is part of your research is figuring out, <laughs> excuse me, figuring out what it is that you need that's gonna qualify you for a franchise. Now, write this down. Most of the time, and it varies from franchise to franchise, but franchises wanna see your credit score, they want to, because if you have good credit, then you're a good person in their eyes, you know? How much cash do you have on hand? Do you have any assets? What, what does your portfolio look like? What is the cash on hand? Have you ran a business before? What is your experience, your resume? These are all the things that goes into buying a franchise when a franchise, franchisee, um, a franchisor, excuse me, sits down and you know, exchanges information and figures out whether or not you will be valuable enough to purchase a part of their franchise. So start checking those things off the list. Make sure you have a good credit score. Make sure that you have cash saved up. Make sure that you have assets. You know, make sure that you are able to speak the lingo about return on investment. All of these things, you know how to understand revenue reports, financial statements, profit and loss statements. These are the things that's gonna help you to become successful when you're having these conversations and you're applying for the franchise. Number two, once you've found out what business you wanna get into and you know that you are equipped to embrace these challenges, you do meet the requirements, you can contact the franchisors, it's usually on the website. So you go to the website, you can you know, send them an email and fill out an application online, they'll give you a call back, and you have to provide all the documentation and everything of that nature, right? So when you, when you contact them, you want to have everything in order. You know, your, your business name, your entity, how many people are part of it, if it's only you, have your statements, your tax returns, or everything that you have to, the ta bring, to the, bring to the table, you want to have it all organized, okay? Number three, discovery day. Different franchises may call it something different, but typically that's the name of the day. This is the point where after you've reached out to the franchisors and you've you know, filled out the application, they now invite you out for a discovery day, which you go, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Number three, which is discovery day. This is now the point where you go out and you meet with the franchisors for the day. And you understand their operations. You know, they take you on, on, on a full trade day so that you can get direct influence on what it takes to be successful as a franchisee um, in this business. This is an important step. This is where you show the face-to-face -face value, okay? So you're beyond your research. You've contacted them, you've, come out, you've came out for Discovery Day. The fourth step is reviewing the franchise agreement. We need to highlight this. This is like, you get a start, but this is a start. Hopefully, I don't know if that's a star, but you get my point. I say that this is extremely important because different franchises, they have different agreements, okay? 
You know, some franchises, they may allow you to, you know, get your own business. You know, so for example, with my cleaning company, I have the option of getting my own business or I can license, you know, the, the network that they, the, the parent company has and they can provide me business. But some companies don't want you to go out and get your own business or start new. Um, the royalties may be higher. There may be finder's fees. There's publishing. There's a, so many fees and different things that goes into the franchise agreement that you want to be very careful and thorough about how you go about this franchise agreement. Make sure you consult with an attorney. Have your attorney sit with you and look over this agreement. You know, what, what is the stipulation from when do you start your process? Once you buy into the franchise, how long is it going to take for you to start to get work? How long is it going to take for your business to be established? How quickly are they going to be able to train you? Who are you able to reach out to to continue to get education? Because it's going to be an ongoing battle. You're not going to just jump into this business, somebody else's business, and just be 100% at it. You're going to need support as you continue throughout this. So you want to understand everything about this. And once you understand the franchise agreement, and if you're happy with it and you're okay with it, then it's a good move for you. Number five, financing options. So to eat, like I said, this is just a blanket statement or this is blanket steps to buying a franchise. Each franchise is different. Every franchise has their own steps. For me, my franchise, you can either purchase it outright with cash, so you can buy into the company, you know, $50,000, and they set you up, and then they give you the business, or you can finance it where you put a small portion of the money up a down payment, and throughout your business, they just take back what you owe them um, on the front end. So you want to make sure that you look at these options and see what's best for you. Whether it's putting up the money up front, down payment, financing, what is your credit score? How does all of these avenues look for you? Financing options are very, very um, unique to each franchise. Not every franchise has financing options, but these are the things that you want to focus on. And why I'm a big advocate of credit is because you can leverage your credit to get a franchise and then you just make the payments over time monthly as long as you're running the business to pay them back. And now you have an automated business with systems that somebody else has built their blueprint and you've leveraged your credit. So it's not hard. It's very, very, very um, reachable for us. It's very reachable, okay? So once we've, you know, we did our research on the business, we've contacted the franchisers, We've met up for discovery day. We reviewed the franchising agreement. We understand what our financing options are to ultimately be able to afford um, this, this, this business. Now, we're starting to get in motion, okay? Number six is location. You know what they say in real estate, location, location, location. Location, location, location. That is gonna be the determining factor to the success of your business. For example, if you have a Starbucks that you're buying into, and it's, the, it's one, two blocks away, why would you want to put another Starbucks there? Because that's, that's your competition now. You want to make sure that the location is right so that you can drive the right amount of traffic into your store to get dollar sales, okay? Location is extremely important. You want to make sure that you work direct hand in hand with the franchises so that they can put you in the best location possible. If you are in New York State, Whatever company, well, excuse, excuse me, I'm sorry. Location is also based on where you're buying your franchise. So you can be a licensed franchisee in New York State, but not in Florida or not in Dallas. You're only licensed the rights to do business on behalf of this company in New York State. So that is another component of, of location that we need to really understand. Because if we move now and we want a business to, to move with us, we have to now get licensed for the new area. Once we figure that out, you now move on to the next step, which is training. Again, you're running a new business here, a business that somebody's been successful with. They have to train you to be successful in that business. So you're gonna go through rigorous training processes. You know, you're gonna be 
hours and hours, days of training, solutions, it's going to be beneficial only to you because the franchise is going to teach you as the franchise owner and then you have to go out and teach your employees. If, you're, if, you're, if you don't know, how could you run an effective business? Training is a big component. A lot of, fran a lot of good franchisees or franchisers, they place a lot of emphasis on training because they want to make sure that you're equipped with the skills, the resources, the support to be successful in the business. Okay? Now, we, we started to make our way through. You know, we making our way through. We did our research, contact franchises, discovery day, franchise agreement. We financed. We, we know our location. We are trained. And the last but not least, launch your franchise. Go to market. Execute. Get your grand opening set up. Get ready to tell the world and show the world that you are now an authorized franchisee of whatever business that is, whether it's Subway, Starbucks, McDonald's, or it's a local uh, cleaning company or a local shop, a barber shop, whatever it may be. We need to start to think on a smaller level. Franchises are not only big corporations. You have small, mid-level franchises that you can invest in for a smaller dollar amount and still be profitable. But ultimately, we want to make sure that we go to market after we've done this and launch our business. But the key is to sustain that. Once you've launched your business, how do you stay in business? How do you continue to scale? And that's what I'm going to teach you if you join and subscribe to the channel and you tune in to the Mogul Coaching Program. But this is what we have here, all right? You now are equipped with the skills and the steps to go out and buy a franchise. Good luck, kings and queens. I'm out. It's the young mogul. Mogul life. Mogul. Mogul life. Yeah. Mogul life.